Whoa, whoa. This is a Honda Goldwing. This is also a Honda Goldwing. This is a 1981 Gen 2 Honda GL 1100 Goldwing. Today we're gonna pull this bike out and get it running. Then we're gonna get it roadworthy enough to road trip it across Pennsylvania on the historic Route 30. But before all of that, let me back up and fill you in on this story. I got an email from a viewer and he challenged me to see if I could get this bike running. Now after looking at a couple pictures, I realized this bike was gonna be the most challenging one yet, but I had no idea exactly what I was in for on this one. All right, step one fellas, pull this out of the weeds and get it down to here. Dan, set that camera I'm, down. I'm helping you, aren't I? There, oh, now it is. There we go. Yeah, this is gonna run. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> okay, we'll let that thing chooch for a bit. Let's see what we got. Let's take an inventory here. This is a 1981 Goldwing, GL1100, and that makes it a Gen 2. You see the original Goldwing started production in 1974. Gen 1 ran to 1979. In 1980, the assembly of this bike was moved to Marysville, Ohio for the 1981 models. This would be the first Goldwing assembled in America. Okay, so we're gonna need a front tire here eventually to get this thing home. That tire does not hold air. The brake was spinning, the wheel was spinning, so that's a good sign. Our brakes aren't locked up okay we got leaky fork seals check headlight wind jammer fairing that's tight like tiger all right but we do have a cd player we're missing a key so we're going to be hot wiring stuff and we're also going to be breaking into here so we can get to the fuel cap to put gas in it we have the four cylinder the parallel four shaft drive oh boy the back brakes are locked too. So on the scale of challenging, this just went from a six to about an 11. I'm comfortable riding a bike home with one set of brakes. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable riding a bike home with no sets of brakes. But let's start with getting it running because that's step number one. So these carburetors are pretty fairly easy to get to. I think once we pull this tank here, we're gonna be able to get to our carburetors. Who knows? May not even have to do that. We'll see. Clutch, do we have a clutch? Okay, we have clutch. Let's look at these brakes. We have antennas. They're enhanced with dual antennas. Nature. Oh yeah, that is tight. Center stand, that's handy. We got a new battery. There's our fuel on and off. This is where spiders live. Okay, spark plugs are gonna be easy to get to. Okay. Well, where do we start, fellas? You tell me, Craig. We start where we start. That's always a great place to start. Okay, so we need to get the seat off and we need to get this off. We gotta put some juice to the wires, but first too, we gotta, gotta find the connection for uh, the key switch up here so we can hot wire it because we're missing the key, which is not a problemo. It's only a problem if you make it a problem, right, Dan? Yeah. It's all perspective. How did I forget a paper clip? Must have used them. All this talk about can't leave home without a paper clip. I know, I must have used it for something. Craig leaves home without his paper clips. Ben's got one in his trapper keeper, I know it. There we go. To the rescue. To the rest, uh oh. Take the stuff off of it. Okay. Dan, push that starter button, see what happens. Yep. Does that mean you did hot wire it? Yeah, I have it hot wired. It's just not turning. Yeah, so first step is we want to see if this engine will turn over. Make sure the engine's free. If the engine's not free, we're going to have a long day ahead of us. Look how rusty that is. That's on the inside. That's not a... Do we have more? It's not a good sign. More, more engines? No. no. <laughs> I do have more spark plugs. That's what I was asking. That's what I was getting at. Oh, geez. No. Bueno. That was a spark plug at one point? There's a lot of rust down in Ooh here. Woo-wee! What's the difficulty gone up, Craig? 14. I'm curious what this scale is that you're making up. It'll all become clear as we go. This is entirely subjective, however my... This is how Craig feels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> at the moment. My wife always wants me to talk about my feelings, and I can't do that with her, but I can do that with you. Comment below if you're here for Craig's feelings. <laughs> See if we can get it to. Oh, that that wheel ain't turning. 
It's not turning at all, is it? I think our motor's locked up. It means the pistons aren't moving. Does that mean we're pretty much dead in the water? Pretty much. Uh, do we want to do something else to try and confirm that? Yeah, what do you want to do? We could try to still kick start it by just like running down the road. <gasps> I don't know. <laughs> Dude, we broke a sweat and half broke our backs moving it four inches. Yeah, but that's through the grass. And it's got a flat tire in the front <laughs> and the front brakes are locked up. Yeah, Dan's like, oh, just push it down a hill. It's Pittsburgh, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. <laughs> you know, there's like GL experts out there like, cool, oh, all you gotta do is this. Seized up engine, that's easy. Just uh, lube up the knifter valve. Spin the dingle arm. Look at that, here we have the timing belts. There's one for this side, and there's one for that side. In the middle you have your crank pulley right there, and that's powering both belts. The one over to here and the one over there, you have a tensioner. And what this does is, this is timing the top end with the bottom end. So this is timing your valve train as the engine spins to time your valve train so valves aren't hitting pistons and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a wrench on there, and we're gonna give it the old uh, heave ho and see if anything will spin. So I'm gonna stick this on here. Yeah, oh my God! It's tight. Oh, got it. Yeah, we're moving. Can try this again? Try this again. Give it a whack. Nothing? Yeah, it's tight again. Okay, so we need PB Blaster. What else do we need at the moment? That's really about it. I need to pry this open. Oh, Craig, you learned how to lockpick. Figured it out. But I want to take this off because if I can get that engine to spin, this is where I'm going to spray the magic spray. We'll spray the spray in there. All right, Craig, how you feeling about getting, getting her running? I'm a little more optimistic than I was five minutes ago because I got the engine to kind of move and we'll get some slippery stuff down in those holes and cross our fingers, see if we can get it to turn over. If we can get it to spin over fast enough, it'll I can get it to fire. How fast does PB Blaster work? On something like this, probably wouldn't hurt to let it sit for a day or two. But we ain't got that kind of time, Dan. Oh my gosh, man, this thing is, is tight. Oh, I am not sure what happened there, but something happened. It's moving again? It's moving again. That movement. Get excited. Oh yeah, I gotta get excited. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hook some power to it again and see if it'll spin. See if it'll get stuck again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now back up, because if this thing spins, it's gonna explode? It's, well, no, but it's gonna shoot stuff out. Of the exhaust, too? No. Dang it. Yeah, it just gets tight again. We're gonna keep doing this until it'll spin. Yeah, once it spins, we'll spray the stuff in the hole and see if we can get the fire. Keeps getting easier. I see it like spin a hair and then it gets caught again. Dan's favorite question every time we do something like this. Well, how long is it gonna take you? This one's gonna take a little longer than some of the others. Thank you, Craig. That one cylinder's holding. That other cylinder's not moving. So you're saying we have a problem cylinder. Yeah, we got at least one problem cylinder. And that's gonna be because, you know, the exhaust valves were open and all that moisture and everything was getting in and it's just, it rusted the cylinder and your the rings are, you know, were stuck. And now I think it's just a matter of like rust ring around the cylinder that we're trying to, to break through. And that's what's keep keeps holding us up. Because I can get it to go, see there, it, I mean, it, it stops, it stops dead. I mean, you, you bring it up and that's it. Like, Do you wanna at least see what it looks like if the starter just turns it as much as it can? Sounds like you want to. Okay, watch your face balls. Ooh. Is that what you wanted? Yeah, that's it. Look, I, I kind of expected that's all that would happen. Yeah, and that's, that's it, and then it's tight. <laughs> and, and now, you know, now I gotta break it from there again. 
Guys, we've been working at this pretty much all day so far and we got the engine free and it moves a little bit, but we can't get a complete revolution out of it. The cylinders have been soaking for a while, been working it back and forth and it just keeps getting tight. I think this is a little more than I can handle in the backyard in one day. Getting into these situations, I always knew that this was a possibility and I was gonna have to admit defeat. With this engine still locked up, we're running out of daylight and nowhere near home. So feeling defeated, we loaded up the bike and my pride and headed back east. Yep. But I'm gonna get this bike running, even if it takes the full arsenal of my shop. So this turned out to be a little more than a backyard project. So we have it in the shop and we are still gonna work at getting this thing to run. It may not run great, but we're gonna try to get it to run. We need to get the engine to turn over. Once we get the engine turning over pretty good, then we're gonna get it to run. So let's get the engine to turn over. There's enough PB blaster in there. Do you wanna put like a drip pan under there for the PB blaster? Dang, Craig, this thing looks so clean now. Ooh, it does. So I didn't really want to get into tearing the whole front of this bike apart in that dude's backyard. So what we're going to do now is move the radiator so we can get to that crank bolt better. We're going to get a big breaker bar on there and we're going to get this engine spinning. Once we have the engine spinning, we're going to keep putting blaster in the spark plug holes to lube things up and then we're going to see if it'll fire. That seemed like the most convoluted way to do that. Well, I couldn't make it that way. You didn't feel like walking around the bike? Right. I thought that would have drained the coolant. Craig, I'm needing to not hurt yourself. Now let's see if coolant comes out. Hey, that's drip, drip, dripping. That's something. None of this is easy, easy getting to. Yeah, Craig, I don't think anything about this bike would be considered easy. I don't, I don't think Not anyone's so gonna say far, that. so far, I tell you. Hey. That's what we need. Now that that's out of the way, we can get a socket on there with a breaker bar and we can turn this engine over. Let's, for fun and games, let's take a gander down in them spark and plug holes. Oh yeah, see that rust? Yeah. That's partly what we're fighting. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is the cylinders are definitely rusted and that is sending me in a direction for this bike. It's like, when do you deem a bike a parts bike? We can get it to run, but in order for it to run right and be right, you know, we're gonna have to pull this whole engine apart. We're gonna have to redo the cylinders, put new rings in. Hopefully the pistons would be salvageable or else you just put new uh, pistons in right away as well. But is this bike worth it? There's so much other stuff going on. We, our front brakes are locked. Our rear brakes are all but locked. Our front master cylinder is bad. Our rear master cylinder is bad. Our forks are leaking a ton of oil. It needs tires. So from one end of the bike to the other end of the bike, you just need to spend time and money. So I'm thinking we get this thing to fire up and run and then it's probably going to go to someone to pull some parts off of and make their bike even more awesome. So here we have our valve train. Our timing belt's coming off the crank pulley to our cam pulley. Our camshaft is in here. And then we have our rocker shafts. We have our rockers. We have our valves. These are valve springs. Intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust. And then underneath here is the valve. So as this spins, the cam is moving these rockers on the cam lobe. And that's what's opening and allowing the valve to close. If for some reason timing became off, what could happen is we're pushing a valve into the cylinder while the piston's coming up and the cylinder and the piston are hitting each other. Um, that's not good. That's, that's not what we want. If we just have to break through some rust, I believe we can get it to run. But if our timing's off, we're gonna have to go through and reset timing. And hopefully there wasn't any damage done like a bent valve or something. Timing could have went off if it jumped a tooth or two on the belt for some reason. You know, we don't know why it was really parked. It was just parked. So, you know, we're kind of figuring that out as we go.
So I think what's happening is we have some stuck valves. Mm -hmm. This pad right here, see that pad? That is running on that cam lobe. See the shiny cam lobe in the back there? So as that lobe comes up and presses against this pad, it should push this forward, opening this valve. But I think what's happening is this valve is stuck, so it's not allowing this cam lobe past here to keep rotating. So I think we have some stuck valves. Let's start with some PB Blaster. When you want to sink the carburetors, those are the vacuum ports. So what we're going to do, they go directly into the intake. So I'm going to pull those and, and we're going to get some PB Blaster shot in there. That should sit right on top of those valves and loosen them up. That one's moving. Sounds like it's moving. Oh. I hear, some, I hear some crunching. I know, I hear <sighs> some good crunching going on. We did see these valves move, right? Yes. Yeah, those valves are very obviously moving. Ooh, it's coming out the exhaust. What on earth? Did I just get it to make a full revolution? Dude, did you just get through it? Yep, just had to work it back and forth a little. Let the PB blaster do its job. You got these valves moving? I got the intake valves we're moving. Whoa! That's why we wear safety glasses, folks. All right, we got this thing freed up. Yeah! Dude! Is it time to turn her over? I think it might be. Moment of truce? Moment of truce. I don't want, watch, this could squirt everywhere. Um, I'll, I'll watch and see if it does. Hmm, didn't do anything. I don't think it's getting power. It at least would have been making that. Um, okay, yeah. now we're getting the turn signal. Look at this! Is it squirting? All the valves are going. Nice. Yes. That's a huge win. That is huge. Oh, yes. All right, let's put these covers back on. We know all that's free, all that's moving. <laughs> that's exciting. We are on the right track. Let's make us a key switch quick. Here you go, Craig. It's going to be our new key switch. Don't look at my ugly solder job. Now, I'm gonna put this in here. Let's check some spark. Key on. All right, over here, Dan. Let's see if we got some spark. You saw it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Let's check this other side. Oh. Yeah. Okay, key switches off. Let's put spark plugs in. I'd say we're firing all, on all cylinders, but we don't know how good one of those cylinders is. Oh yeah. So should we do compression? Okay, when you compression test, compression tester in the cylinder. Now, Dan, go to the other side. I'm gonna turn the key switch on. Hold the throttle wide open. Hold, there you go. And hit the starter button. And we're gonna watch this gauge until it stops moving. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Do it again. Okay. 175 pounds of pressure in that cylinder. That one's good. Okay, do it again. We got a dead cylinder. All right. So that cylinder's not gonna fire because we have no compression in that front left cylinder. So maybe we broke a ring. Maybe there's just so much debris in there. Maybe a valve's being held open a little. We're gonna test these over here. Just under 100 pounds. So that cylinder's borderline. It'll probably run, but it's not gonna run great. This is leaning more and more like a parts bike, but we're still gonna get it to run. Look how that jumps right up. That's about where the other one was. Yep. So we're good on two, we're borderline on one, and we're bad on the other one. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is gonna be to put the plugs in, spray it with a little fire, and see what happens. Can we hear this thing run? Just like that. 
Okay, now in here's the air cleaner. Well, I took the air cleaner out. But this is the air box, so we're going to spray this with some, <laughs> some fire juice. Okay, key switch on. Beep. We got lights. We do not have any coolant in it, so we got to watch. We're not going to run it long. We're going to get it to, we're just going to get it to fire up, and then we're going to, oh, let me try something here. What are you trying? We're going to put this lid on. Oh, man, we're just pushing. Look at all that stuff pouring out of the exhaust. <laughs> oh. That's nasty. Okay, you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Let's see what we can do here. Woo! <laughs> yes! <laughs> no way. Oh, man. There's a lot of PB Blaster coming out of this motor. <laughs> See if we can get any fuel through these carburetors. Fingers crossed. Is that gonna be high enough? Yeah, this is actually, this is a fuel pump. Oh, okay. Good question though, Dan, you're learning. Man, I like that. Okay, let's turn that on. It's flowing. Can you hear it gurgling? Okay. Got lights. I was just gonna say, it's pouring fuel out, but it beat me to it. I just walked around and just noticed a fuel leak, and poof, just like that, it went up in flames. <laughs> Those don't explode, do they? Do they burn enough, just like in movies? The bikes? Yeah. I've never had one burn long enough. So from here, I had two <laughs> options. I could end the video, or I could finish what I started. Now lucky for you guys, I'm too dumb to quit. So I turned the radio on, put my head down and got to work. Becoming one with the bike, I put on an old sketchy front tire I had laying around. I rigged up a brake with just a whiff of stopping power. Checked, double checked, and then triple checked again for fuel leaks. All that's left to do now is, well, just keep watching and you'll see. Look at that, all that came out went in except for that little bit. Look at that. Ship shape. And then this goes on here. Put under here. Just like that. It looks right here, Dan. Does that look right? That looks right. Glug a glug a glug. -a. <laughs> oh, it's our gas tank. Ship shape. It's ready? I think it's gonna be as ready as it's ever gonna be. Craig, this thing was on fire. It was, it was on fire just not long ago. But it's all right, I hosted off for set. Let's put the table down. That's not how safety works. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, speaking of safety, you're right, Dan. So let's tape our fuel line here, just so that doesn't get away from us. <laughs> okay, how's that? Safe. <laughs> I feel so much better. I'm gonna turn the gas on. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Let's see what this puppy can do. Oh yeah, we're not leaking gas, are we? No, where was the leaking gas last time? Somewhere in underneath there. Okay. All right, yeah. let's take this girl for a spin. Oh, that didn't work. Or stall out. Wait, Craig, Craig, hey. wait. What? what? Oh.
Good looking out, Dan. Thank you. There we go. Hey, look at that. The brake slowed me down. I'm riding it! Who would have thought? This is amazing! What a beautiful bike. Do I have brakes? Kinda. Not really. A little bit. The front brakes probably locked up a little. There we go. This thing is running perfectly. Hey, moo cows. Mm. Okay, maybe it's not running so perfectly, but it's running. Second gear. It is getting a little smoky. I'm calling that a victory. It didn't catch fire. No, but it's smoking down here. And there you have it, guys. We dug this thing out of a backyard, got it running, took it for a ride. Hope you guys liked watching this video as much as we liked making it for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out one of these two videos right here. You're going to love it. Later.